What's the worst way anyone has screwed you over? Not too terrible, but it sucked at the time. My college roommate took care of all the bills, so I just wrote him a check each month for my half, and he paid the rent, electricity, etc. Then one day, some of his friends from out of town visited for the weekend. I come home on Sunday night to find him half-packed. He says he's going with them. This kinda leaves me in the lurch since I don't have another roommate lined up or anything and I can't afford the place on my own. But frick, I can't stop him from leaving. I suppose I could insist that he pays for another month of rent or something, but it didn't occur to me. So I said whatever and started looking for another roommate the next day. Then later that week, I get the first overdue notice. Then I get a call from the landlord. The F word hadn't paid any bills in two to three months, so he was taking my checks, cashing them, and using the money for himself. The previous Christmas, he'd kept a friend's cat while she went home for the break. The cat stayed in his room, which was a disgusting mess. Ants eating the food that he'd left or spewed up. Crap-stained underwear everywhere, just a disgusting place, so I felt pretty bad for the cat. After he'd moved out, I went in there and found among the moldy plates and bugs the complete full and overflowing cat litter box. The cat had crapped and peed in it for six weeks or so, and at some point just begun crapping and peeing everywhere else instead. The cat left sometime in January. He had moved out in July. Luckily, I was able to get most everything straightened out, but it was super stressful for a while and I still resent him. You understand that by law, if you ever see this person again, you're required to punch him directly in the crotch, yeah? Julie noted, on the positive side, my next roommate sold a green herb, so I got a lot of it for free. When my dad passed away, his house was put up for sale at a public auction. The auction was set up by a notary. I was present at the auction, but apart from two other couples, no one else was. Because of the exceptionally low turnout and me being underaged and not in the know about this kind of thing, the price was about a quarter of what the house was worth. It was sold. I now have to pay off a 20-year loan to be able to afford a house, while I could have had one for free. Afterwards, we found out that the notary had set up a deal with the bidding couple and forgot to schedule the sale in the official channels. Basically, no one showed up because all of five people knew there would be a binding sale that evening. My advice? If you're dealing with a notary or lawyer and you're not very knowledgeable in the particular field they're working in, get a second opinion. Heck, get a third if you want to be sure, because there are people out there who won't think twice about taking advantage of a 15-year-old who just became a half-orphan. The running commentary after this story was that the notary in question acted in bad faith and could probably be liable for legal action. There was no follow-up on whether justice was served, so I guess we'll never know. I moved out at 17 and had no checking account. Me and my buddy both worked two jobs in preparation for college expenses the next year, and we gave cash to the third roommate to handle bills and rent, only to find out months down the road that she'd given not a single frick at any point or paid bills or rent for months. We kicked her the F out and my other buddy fled as well because the cost of making it work was much too high. So I was stuck sorting the entire thing out myself. Goodbye, entire savings up to this point in my life. Hello, three jobs, college, and ramen every night for two years. I had my best friend's 14-year-old stepsister accuse me of doing the deed with her. She told all of her friends, and then when her parents found out, instead of telling the truth, she told a bigger lie. It's been almost two years now, and I'm still fighting the court case. My at-the-time girlfriend's mum offered me a job worth double what I was making now, but she had to interview me to make it look official for HR. I applied, but HR didn't like that I already had a job, so she told me to quit and apply again. So I quit my job and applied again, went in for the interview, and everything was great. My application was processing, and I was totally going to get the job. I didn't get the job. After her and I broke up like two years later, she just admitted she was jealous I didn't have any debt, and she wanted me to lose my job so I'd be forced to get a loan, so I could be in debt like her and see how it feels. Don't stick your wang in toasters or however that saying goes. Anyone else hear alarm bells at HR didn't like that I already had a job? Being claimed as a deduction for being in college, while I was in the Persian Gulf, circa 1991, and end up being audited by the IRS. Having multiple utilities, gas, electric, phone, opened up in my name while I was in the Persian Gulf, and none of them being paid for, and they were in a totally different state, more than once. Having countless credit cards opened up in my name, none of the bills paid, and having a totally destroyed credit rating for six years, while I was in the Persian Gulf. Thanks, Mum. My mother was and is the epitome of a welfare queen. If there's any angle, trick, or scam she can get away with to get free money from someone else, or most importantly the government, 
she would not hesitate to lie, cheat, or steal her way into it. I was forced at five years old to go to the local store to spend a dollar food stamp, before the credit card thing, to get her 95 cents and change so she could get something like cigarettes. I learned the hard way how she operated, and by the time I was in my early 20s, I disowned her. She moved away to Vegas to be near my sister to try and mooch off her. My sister learned after about five years, and my mother moved back to where I live in some vain hope that I'd forgotten. I had not. She continues to call every now and then to ask for money or to fix her car, or fix something else. Not even to ask about her grandchildren, of which I have four of them with my hot wife. Screw her and screw the horse she rode in on. My wife agrees, as do my children. I've never been on welfare as an adult. I work hard and pay for everything I have and that of my children. And yes, I'm the 99%. I can only hope that people follow this advice when it comes to their credit and lives. Watch it like a hawk and do not trust anyone. I purchased a car from a buddy. Its engine was bad, but it did have a bunch of custom parts on it I was going to use on my car which was the same model. I didn't have time to get the parts off, and it sat around for a couple of weeks. His dad got impatient and had the car junked. No one told me this was going to happen, or that there was a timetable. I asked for my money back, and the guy laughed in my face. Screw that guy, I couldn't even go to the small claims court. I never got a bill of sale, never got the car's title. I wholly blame myself for getting ripped off. Expecting people not to screw me, I was a noob at life. My girlfriend tells me she can't leave with me when I'm moving, but wants to come in one to two months when the semester is over. During this time, we talk every day. I continue to help her pay the bills, etc. Two months pass and she says she's ready to move. Come and get me. I rent a truck, drive from Colorado to Virginia, and upon my arrival find a note in the door that she had an anxiety attack and is no longer sure she can move. No call to talk about it, no face-to-face, a note on the door. FYI, four weeks later she calls, saying she was wrong and she loves me. I wished her well and never looked back. I mean, that seems like something done out of fear rather than malice, but yes, she should still have at least talked to you. Hope your life went forward well. I'd been dating a girl for around 9-10 to months. We were great together, no fights, no drama, just kept it chill and had the time of our life. She got a promotion two hours away from where we lived and needed to move. She was nervous about the distance, but I only had a year left in school and I'd join her. Well, moving day came. She was busy working and had been living in the new spot for a week or two. I grabbed my dad's truck and my band's trailer and with the help from my parents, we got all of her stuff loaded up and made the journey. Once we'd got everything moved out and put into the new apartment, I gave her a call to see what she'd want to do for dinner and the evening in general. She essentially replied, I can't do the distance, sorry. I was completely stunned and to add insult to injury, her stepdad gave me about 30 bucks for gas after hauling all her crap two hours away. Took care of a very sick girl for eight and a half years. She had no responsibilities whatsoever except to do things that helped keep her healthy. She had everything she wanted and I was happy to provide it. When we broke up, she packed up all of my things, I was out of town, and then proceeded to tell horrible lies about me in a thinly veiled attempt to bully me away from fighting for my belongings. Ironically, I would have given her anything she wanted. All she had to do was ask. Over three years later, I'm still stunned by what happened. I was so blind. I'm not looking for sympathy here, but I was sleeping with this guy, always protected. One day, he couldn't find a rubber and convinced me he'd just been tested and was clean and wasn't sleeping with anyone else, and convinced me that we didn't need to use protection. Then he infected me with a transmissible disease. Lesson learned. Trust no one, ever. Parents got divorced, dad kicked my mum out, I was still a senior in high school. I graduate and take a job to try and save up. He decides to get a new girlfriend to spite my mum. Talks crap about my mum and lets this new lady bully me. She likes to F with me by smacking a hammer on my bedroom wall really early in the morning, sneaks into my room while I'm at work and steals things from me. I came to my dad begging and crying for him to help me. He calls me crazy, tells me to lock my doors every day in my own house, and accuses my sister of doing it. I catch the girlfriend stealing from me on the last day of work and tell my dad. He kicks me out the very next day. I haven't talked to him in over two years and I have nightmares about him. I made him pay me back over $1,300 that she stole from me or I'd sue her. You can submit your own stories to be featured here on the channel. The story submission link is in the description below. And if you want to listen to some vibey music in the background, check out Easy Mode, also linked below, and subscribe. 
A long time ago, began dating a girl. The girl turned out to be a genius-level sociopath. How do I make this long story short? A member of her family engaged only in manipulations in order to control her, so it's all she learned from growing up. Her IQ was like 140 or higher. She hid it. Seemed normal to everyone. Honestly believes that everyone exists to serve her. Won't ask for things normally. If she wants something, engages in social manipulations. She's deadly patient, too. We were together on and off for a while for years. Some highlights, or lowlights in this case. She manipulated me into selling most of my possessions, then spent the money mostly on substances. Stole my bank account information, bought herself tons of crap, then something for me. The birthday present overdrew my account, starting a chain reaction of crap. I didn't find out till almost a year later. She threw out letters from the bank, but continued writing bad checks from my account. A year later, I almost received felony bad check charges, and I had to hire a lawyer for about seven grand, plus the amount of the bad checks, so that I wouldn't have anything on my record. I found out much later that she kept six or seven guys on the line at all times, all for different reasons. She was long-term dating most of us because she thought we would have a future. Future doctors, lawyers, basically anyone who had a shot at making it. A couple were just because they were good to do the deed with, and I found out she went to swinger parties and used to bed about two random guys per month. This, of course, totally unknown to me at the time, she had me and everyone else totally fooled. After I finally sorted it out that she was no good and left, temporarily she always roped me back in until I found out the whole truth, she tried, and in many cases succeeded, to sabotage any relationship I attempted to start. She actually was able to manipulate people into spying on me, manipulate guys into hating me and trying to fight me, and stuff like that. I'd go to parties and random guys would show up and try to kick my butt, because she had done the deed with them, then told them that I'd hit her, and so on. She even got a couple of girls to seek me out, lie, and get me to go on dates with them so they could report back to her. My phone was blocked and I'd be unable to contact them, and then I'd find out later she had been contacted by my ex and that she had sat her down and lied, saying things like I was married, I had two kids, I had transmissible diseases, I was cheating on the girl with the person I was dating. All of course totally untrue, but she'd present convincing evidence, then make friends with the girl and increase the cult of women who hated me. We were off and on because of this. And I didn't know that she was the cause of any of it for years, she was that darn slick. For years and years. I could go on. The craziest part was I looked back at what she said to me during our first date and realized that she was setting up manipulations that very first day that she didn't kick in until sometimes two or three years later. That crap still blows my mind. It means our first date, she was planning to screw me over in all of these ways. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call a textbook sociopath. I think the worst part is actively preventing the author from escaping and getting his own life. What a piece of work. My mum made me so sick with her behavior that I ended up in the ER as a child because I was spewing blood for days. I developed stress ulcers. Here's just a few of some of the things she did while I grew up there. She always dumped her emotional crap on me, such as how my dad wasn't doing the deed with her anymore, how he didn't please her, and how he didn't love her anymore, and how daddy was so mean. One day while crashing at yet another stranger's house, I overheard her telling my father that she didn't love him anymore and wanted a divorce. She came into bed with me, cried, took off her wedding ring, gave it to me and says, Daddy doesn't want me to have this anymore, you might as well wear it. Then she put it on my finger. That doesn't sound so bad reading it, but imagine all the thoughts a child would have about wearing her mother's wedding ring after hearing they are getting a divorce, and all of the responsibility placed in that moment. I ended up consoling her to sleep like she was my baby. Story of my life. I'm so sorry people like that have a license to breed, even if it means I wouldn't have existed as a result. That sounds emo. I mean it honestly and seriously. I lived with my father. Mother lied and said she had a steady job and a house, so I was sent to live with her, because she had ruined my dad's credit by running up huge debts in his name without his knowledge, causing our house to get foreclosed on. She lived in a van behind an adult club. When all of my things arrived, she simply dumped them on the side of the road and I never saw them again. I spent the next year living like a homeless person at 10 years old and she bullied me not to tell anyone. Finally, I did and my dad came up and got me, but gosh darn that screwed me up. I was a year behind in school, ill, and I lost all of my stuff. Little personal, but screw it. I just started college and I was living with my grandmother on my father's side. First time staying with the side of the family, father never cared for me and was incarcerated for his whole life needed a place to stay until I got my crap together. Within a month of living there, father was released from prison and came to live there as well. 
I didn't know he was going to stay there as my grandmother didn't say anything as she knew I didn't want anything to do with him. Anyway, after about another month of awkwardly living under the roof, my father comes home in a car that he got from an auction. He wasn't working at the time and I assumed he was selling substances or had stolen the car. He got arrested again. A friend joined college same time I did and he got his refund. I didn't. After some investigative work, I found out my father took the refund and cashed it, and that's how he got the money for the car. Teed off, I pressed charges, and eventually my grandmother found out about it and kicked me out. I was homeless for a few days. Best friend found out about it and his parents gave me a room. In conclusion, scumbag father took my refund from the grant I received for college and cashed it to buy a car. My ex ceases our activity in the bedroom, citing how it goes against her faith and she feels guilty about it. I'm fine with this and we date for three more months. Everything seemed great until the end where she tells me she's six weeks pregnant. I'm not very good at math, but I do know three months is greater than six weeks. I don't see the problem here. Someone else got her pregnant. That's your get out of jail free card from a crazy person. Within a week of my ex-wife having an affair, she emptied the bank account clean from 10k and moved out of state with her new lover. I found out through his wife and bank account records left me with all of the debt and bills. Two years after the divorce, she opens multiple credit cards in my name and social security number. Thankfully, I have Credit Watch and caught this. Now working on sending her to jail for ID theft and credit fraud. I had a brand new Yamaha R6 and I let my friend try it. He's experienced and wanted a new bike, so he tested my bike. He did a wheelie and of course dropped it, totaled the bike, blamed me for not having full insurance and didn't pay a cent. Have not talked to him since. But now I have a brand new R1. Never let anyone ride your motorcycle. If you break it, you pay it is what I always tell when friends or family want to ride my motorcycle or car. I quit my job so I can watch my kids while my wife was deployed to Afghanistan. She falls for a contractor over there and dumps me. Now I am jobless, wifeless, and I'd be freaking homeless too if I wasn't living at my dad's house. Oh, and when she returns from Afghanistan, she wants full custody of the boys. And I just turned 30 today. Happy fricking birthday to me. I accidentally broke the small glass door of my closet. Dad came in, saw the shattered glasses on the floor. I told him it was an accident. He pointed his finger at me and yelled, You're an accident! I was 11. Just remembering what he said is depressing. This is a terrible thing to say to a kid, and sadly enough, it's distant enough from me that I chuckled a bit at the childishness of the father's response. Bad an eraser. Bad. My brother is a contractor, and after offering to handle our whole home renovation, he started a demolition, then decided he was too busy to finish and abandoned the project. He just didn't show up for two weeks, and when I contacted him, he showed zero remorse for screwing me over. I've paid him almost $20,000 up front as a deposit for work to be completed. The Renaults started in June. Right now, the master bedroom has no fixtures, there's no doors anywhere, the back wall of the second floor is missing, it's October and getting cold by the way, the bathroom is gutted to the studs, the kitchen has missing walls and there are massive holes in practically every remaining wall. Before just walking off, he'd just not show up for days at a time or only work a couple of hours, then complain he was underpaid the rest of the time. On top of that, due to him having poor credit, I let him use an extension of my credit card with his name on it to purchase materials, which he then proceeded to use to buy gas, food, and booze for himself. When I asked him to stop, he agreed and then continued to do so. I'm now out 50,000 in labor and materials, and now I have to find another contractor. Let me repeat this important fact. This is my brother who's done this. My grandmother did very well in life, and in death left a sizable amount of money to the family, including me. At least that's what I thought, because she showed me a copy of her will about a year before she passed, I get a copy of the will mailed to me by my uncle's lawyer and it has her handwriting on a new amendment, giving all her estate, her outstanding CDs and investments over to him and him alone to do as he pleases. She was in hospice care for six months and I'm betting money she was high on painkillers when he convinced her to sign the amendment. I still have nothing from her. And he's a Catholic priest. Frick. Spent close to 10 years working for a guy who I considered to be like family for less than minimum wage. I helped him build his business up into a very successful entity. He had promised I would get a raise and my own store to manage. I trusted him because I had known him since I was a child and he had never steered me wrong before. I did everything he said and each time I did something new that he asked for or reached a new goal, he said it wasn't done right and I'd have to do it again. I bought in a good amount of money from his clients and kept them there. 
Yet he said no when I said I needed more money to survive. I told him I was cutting my hours back because I had to go get another job. He said I was being selfish, and when I took time off to spend with my family and girlfriend, he said I was neglecting my duties. Told me I needed to quit or start over with reduced pay and no title. I quit. Soon after, a number of clients left as well. His wife, who ran the books, is now leaving him and his other employees have left as well. Clients continue to leave on a regular basis. The place was my life for a long time. It was my dream to have my own location. He promised it to me, but screwed me over. I lost 10 years of my life. Best thing that ever happened to me, though. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories, or if you want some vibey music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot. Everything linked in the description.